Liverpool is a, a fantastic football city. Third time lucky for Liverpool. Liverpool have won the European Cup. Liverpool win it with a golden goal. It's a red night in Istanbul. Turkey, Istanbul, May 25th, 2005. A date etched into the hearts, minds and flesh of Liverpool fans across the globe. The might of Milan roaring into a three-goal lead, only for Rafa's gang of rambunctious red renegades to bust Silvio Berlusconi's bubble and bring home a long-awaited fifth European Cup to Anfield. In the thick of the action from minute one, Jamie Carragher, the bootle boy who put his body on the line time and again to see the Reds through. But whilst that night would grow into the folklore of the city and cemented Jamie Carragher as a global star, the foundations for his success would be laid eight years earlier and some three and a half thousand miles away. I'm Jamie Carragher and this is my Liverpool debut. Nineteen ninety six saw the rebirth of the summer blockbuster as the mega budget Independence Day blew away audiences at the cinema, and Danny Boyle and Ewan McGregor brought Irvine Walsh's drug and dance culture book, Train Spotting, to the big screen, to both cult and critical acclaim. The British music scene was enjoying a renaissance not seen since the sixties, as Britpop conquered the airwaves. Oasis's seminal album What's the Story Morning Glory dominated the charts, and the Spice Girls began their rise to superstardom. Liverpool band cast ensured that local artists too had a seat at the table, with Sandstorm breaking the UK top 10. The beautiful game too was enjoying a golden period, with local lads the Lightning Seeds teaming up with Badil and Skinner to provide the anthem of the terraces, summer barbecues and England's run to the Euro 1996 semi-final at Wembley. Whilst back on Merseyside, the Liverpool team dubbed the Spice Boys, who had fallen at the final hurdle to Man United in the FA Cup were looking to push on from their third place Premier League finish in the new season. Ready in the wings for Roy Evans' Reds were a new crop of talent, including an 18-year-old Jamie Carragher, a boyhood blue who had risen through the club's academy. I joined Liverpool as a nine-year-old kid who was a centre forward for Bootle Boys at the time, and I'll never forget when uh, I got the call from the manager of Bootle Boys, who was a school teacher at the time. He, he came in after training. We used to train on a Friday night and play Saturday mornings. and. After a training session on the Friday, he told four of us, it was myself, John Stannard, Paul Joyce and Stephen Gould, that uh, the Liverpool scout, who was Harry Hodge at the time, had asked us to go up and start training for Liverpool. That's when my, uh, my first connection with Liverpool started. The young Carragher worked his way up the age groups at the Liverpool Academy, with a band of talented youngsters all looking for their big break. So then I, I joined Liverpool and it, it was evident early on the sort of two or three best players in my age group were myself, David Thompson and Jamie Cassidy. And uh, David Thompson went on to have an, uh, you know, a good career. It didn't quite happen for Jamie Cassidy, but we, uh, we all played for England at youth level and, and different levels. And, and what we used to do, at the three of us, was more often than not, we'd play up a year, which, which was a big thing as a kid, certainly at you know, the quality of uh, at Liverpool as the club, so the, you know, the year above us. And, and no one really went on to do anything in terms of first team, really, but it was a really great uh, start for us to really challenge ourselves rather than just playing our own age group. With Robbie Fowler and Steve McManaman already taking the lead by storm, eyes were firmly fixed on Liverpool's line of progression. And who would be the next starlet to make it into the first team? Well, the stars in the team were, were Robbie and Macca, basically the two local lads. That's who I looked up to, that's who I wanted to be. Really, you know, seeing them, you know, everyone loved them within the city. The two main guys coming in in a nice car, training, you know, watching them, you know, start then training with them rather than just watching them. And uh, they were unbelievable, I think, in that Roy Evans' team. I think two of the best players in the Premier League, never mind just at Liverpool at the time. And also them being local lads as well was, was pretty special. So they were the two I looked up to. Though Manchester United had stolen a march on the Reds since the inception of the Premier League, there was a strong feeling of optimism around Liverpool's chances of winning a 19th league title. The club was on the verge of success at that time. I think the Roy Evans era is sometimes looked back on, not too fondly, 
Understandably so, because that, that group of players didn't win the trophies they probably deserved or should have done, I should say, in terms of the quality that they had within that group. Come very close to winning the title, a lot closer than maybe some of the teams I played in, in terms of Gerard Houllier and, and Rafa Benitez later on. You know, I think there was certain seasons when they should have won the league, certainly one I remember in. Yeah, 96, 97, my first season where even though I wasn't playing too much, I was always in the squad or I was always sort of the lad who never got stripped. So I'd always be in and around the bench or in the dressing room. And uh, I always look back at that season thinking Liverpool should have won the league that season, I think. A mainstay of the famous Liverpool boot room going back to the days of Bill Shankly and Bob Paisley, Roy Evans was a cornerstone in the lives of the greatest players to pull on a red shirt. Well, I think any young player will always speak fondly about the manager who gave them their chance. And that manager for me was Roy Evans. And that's why he'll always hold a special place in my heart for, for obvious reasons. And also the fact that his history at the club, I was always fascinated by, you know, Roy Evans and Ronnie Moran, who were there at the time when I broke into the team, that what they'd been through with Bill Shankly and Bob Paisley, and what they'd seen in terms of, you know, league titles and European Cups. and. You know, just listening to them, you know, the words of wisdom that they'd come out with, you know, on a daily basis on the training pitch. And it was just fascinating for me to be around that. And I think I was lucky that I sort of, I got them for two or three years before then we had the, you know, the foreign influx of managers and coaches. Just great to get that little bit of a uh, shankly, if you like, and, you know, the old boot room. Carragher's early chances of breaking into the side look good, being named on the bench against Middlesbrough, Arsenal and Sunderland in the opening month of the campaign. But he then found himself back with the reserves until the visit of Leicester City on Boxing Day. This time, though, his chances of first-team action were closer than ever. Yeah, I felt it was coming. I did. I, I wouldn't say myself and David Thompson were cocky, but we, we had real belief in ourselves. And we felt we were as good as the players playing at the time. We weren't. <laughs> but, you know, we, we had that belief and nothing was going to get in our way, nothing was going to stop us. And uh, I was just fortunate to get my chance. And the big thing about getting your chance as a player, I always feel, is you're not going to get too many chances. You've got to take it when it comes. And uh, I was ready, basically, and I, and I took my chance. It went from there. But yeah, I always believed it would come. You know, I, I always believed it would. And as I said, it was that wasn't arrogance. That was just something scousing us. You know, you've just you've just got that belief that no one's better than you. So you know and. We would speak to the manager at times and ask why we weren't in, on the bench or in squads or why we weren't in the team. He probably thought we were mad, uh, me and little Tomo, but that's just the way we were and we, we had that personality and character. So when it actually came, I actually thought it should have come earlier. <laughs> As 1996 turned to 1997, Liverpool were in the midst of an injury crisis and faced a tricky trip to Middlesbrough in the League Cup quarter final. The Teesiders, under the guidance of former England and Man United midfielder Brian Robson, were in the midst of one of the most infamous Premier League seasons in history. The team that contained Janino, Emerson and the prolific White Feather, Fabrizio Rabinelli, would go on to reach both domestic cup finals, but also get relegated from the Premier League. Carragher's focus, though, was less on the opponent and more on grasping any chance that came his way. To be honest, as a kid, you don't... You, yeah. You just fearless. You don't care who you're playing against. You know you're up for it. You know no one's going to stop you. No one's getting in your way. And as I said, I just I just remember the coach home. We we got beat. We went out. But every young kid thinks the same. You don't really care that the club have gone out. You're not thinking about the club. You're thinking about yourself. And you're just thinking, right? I've made my debut. I've done that. It's like, what's next? You know, that's the next thing you want to do because all you do as a young kid really is think about yourself. With a first appearance under his belt, a new world began to open up for the young Scouser and his first taste not just of first team action, but of the fame that accompanied it. I loved it. <laughs> no, it was great. Yeah, no, it was good. That's what you want to see as a young kid. Any young kid's the same. You've got a few quid in your pocket. You can go out in town. It was Wade Smith at the time. You can go in and get what you want, and you know people recognise and yeah, and it's all good. But listen, over over the course of a career, you have ups and downs, or you know you're playing well, or the team's not doing well, or different things, and 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 at times that can become a burden. But certainly when you first get in the team and you're new to it, and everyone loves you, and it's not your fault if the team get beat. Really, as such, you're just seen as the young kid. You've just you've just got to embrace it. And as I said, you make mistakes, you learn from it, you get experienced and mature. But no, it's brilliant those first few years when you're going out in town with your mates. For a young man as driven as Cara, the first taste of action was good. But he had further ambitions for his burgeoning career and immediate targets in mind for how to achieve them. Michael Thomas, 
yeah, in midfield. I think it was always going to be difficult to uh, take John Barnes off the team. He was such a great player and a legend. I think Jamie Redknapp that season had some really bad injuries. He wasn't really in the in the fold too much. I think he was just getting back around that time when I actually made my debut, to be honest. So no, it was sort of John Barnes, Michael Thomas. That was definitely the one I had in the eye and I felt I could, you know, over that season, you know, maybe overtake. The boy from Bootle wouldn't have to wait long for another bite of the cherry. Just 10 days on from his cameo appearance against Borough, Carragher finally got the nod that he'd been waiting for, as the Reds prepared to take on Aston Villa at Anfield. Yeah, well, I, I, f I find out the team the day before, and uh, I'm playing centre-back in, in a back three. And uh, I've actually played for the reserves Thursday night, would you believe, away at Notts Forest. And they brought me off for about 20 minutes to go. They, I mean, they, they must have knew then, Ronnie Moran and Sammy Lou, who were there on the night, that I would, I'd be involved. It didn't, didn't really click with me, the reason why. And then I just come into training the next day, and we were 11 v 11, I was, I was playing. So everyone was sort of congratulating me after training that I was, I was making my first start. And it was Patrick Berger. Jamie Redknapp and Mach Manham in the midfield, so it was quite an open midfield, really. And then uh, Patrick Berger got sick that night, and Bjorn Kavami's clearance came through. And I've told that story before, where his clearance came through the night before the game, but no one told me. I didn't know, so I wasn't actually playing when I went to bed that night. I thought I was. It was only waking up in the morning, Patrick Berger had gone downhill, so if he hadn't gone ill, I wouldn't have played. So there, there's sometimes when people say you need a little bit of luck, you do, and that is my bit of luck, but you've still got to then take your chance. And uh, yeah, just excited, couldn't wait to play. I was playing alongside Jamie Redknapp, so he must have just come back as well. So there was a few suspensions and injuries. And uh, I wasn't nervous, no. And my dad was very nervous. I remember seeing him before the game. He was quite nervous. But, uh, but no, I just wanted the players, you know, you know, couldn't wait to get going. A 3 p.m. kickoff at Anfield loomed, with the youngster drafted into the midfield. A bubbling, bustling atmosphere grew around the famous old ground as kickoff approached. I mean, I probably didn't appreciate it at the time. You know, as I got older, you know, that thing of touching the sign and, you know, coming out and, you know, that come years later and really taking it all in. As a young kid, I just walked out like I'm going to play a game of footy. I just, I didn't, I don't ever remember being nervous. It was more excited, I couldn't wait to play and, and felt I, I, I should have been playing a little bit earlier. That's probably not right either, but that was just my mentality and it wasn't a case of, you know, who am I playing against or, you know, what happens if my first pass doesn't go well or I get booked after 20 seconds. It wasn't nothing like that. I mean, Villa were a really good team. At that time, Villa were always in the top four then, under Brian Little. Had a really good side, played a similar system to Liverpool three at the back. So it was tough opposition. It was on that day, but uh, no, there was no fear at all, no. Pumped up and eager to impress, Carragher very nearly spent his full debut back in the changing rooms after a characteristically full-blooded start to the game. I mean, it was 20 seconds in, whether it was just, you know, I said I didn't feel nervous, so you just have that tension where you want to, I hadn't touched the ball or I just wanted to do something, you know, and you just go fly, you see something there, and just, your natural reaction just go flying in. And it probably wouldn't, would have been close to being a red card now, that I would imagine, uh, that tackle. Andy Townsend, thankfully it was, it was him, and it was in a, you know, a British player that, you know, he jumped right up rather than a foreign player. Uh, might have been a little bit more of a problem, but but no, I mean, it, I mean, Ronnie Moran said to me at half time actually he said that that can't, that will have calmed you down. That was a good thing to have happened. Now I don't know if that was a psychological thing he was saying just for the second half or what, but it did. It probably did calm me down a little bit and to take it easy in terms of you know going into any more challenges. Five minutes into the second half, Stigging Ibionaby whipped in a corner from the left cop end, and Carragher found space to connect with a header towards the front post. Yeah, and, I, and again, you think about your, 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 a piece of luck. I was possibly only in the box because I was in midfield. Maybe if I was at the back, I'd have been, you know, at the back on the halfway line. But I think it was a lot. I don't know if it was South Gareth Southgate or Ricardo Schimmacher, who was a, went on to be a teammate of mine in the England under 21s, who was marking. But I always make the joke that he didn't have a clue who I was, really, and no one knew who I was picking up. But I think South Gareth Southgate in the. Uh, vicinity anyway when I head it in so I just do a little bit of a movement and then I'm just sort of free in the uh, on the six yard box it never happened again I was never never had that much space again in the next 734 or 35 games but it was not a bad little header actually and uh, mad celebration running away crazy and I always just remember the roar a dream full debut for any player let alone a young scouser 
No, I always remember doing an interview for Match of the Day and uh, trying to be humble. And I said, uh, you know, I won't be in the team next week. Because I think John, a couple of the players were back the following week and I didn't want to look, you know, big-headed and nothing like that. And, and, and in some ways, I'm glad I, that that is me. I don't like to, I, I, I'm never the type of person to blow my own trumpet, but I'm sort of, I think if I'd have watched an 18-year-old kid be interviewed like that, I'd have thought, yeah, I'd rather that than be the other way. But uh, I remember on the Monday, Sammy Lee going mad at me, saying, never do an interview like that. You know what I mean? He was saying, uh, don't make it easy for, you know, the manager to leave you out. You've made it easy for him to leave you out now. Now, he was always going to leave me out. He wasn't going to leave me in the team because I'd had one good game and, you know, Barnes, Redknapp and, and Thomas were there. But uh, that was something that always stuck in my head that Sammy Lee said, never give anyone, you know, an easy opportunity to leave you out the team. So that was the only thing I can remember. Words really after the game. I went to Paradox that night and uh, I always remember being on the dance floor and uh, just closing my eyes. I could just hear that roar. Just that, that noise, and that must be the buzz that goal scorers just get, you know, all the time, and that buzz of scoring a goal, which, which I unfortunately never had too often after. Despite a debut that could barely have been scripted better, Jamie Carragher would find his chances for the rest of the season limited, making just one more sub appearance. The week after, we played Chelsea in the FA Cup. Now, the other players were back, so I was on the bench, which was fine. I totally understood that. And uh, we got, obviously we lost 4-2, we were 2-0 up at half time and got beat 4-2, it was a real bad one. And we were actually flying to Amsterdam right after the game to do some Soccer 6 tournament. That's uh, a legendary tour, shall we say, in Amsterdam. And uh, I always remember John Barnes saying to me, we should have brought you on, we should have brought you on, at 2-1 and stiff in the midfield up. And that for me was like, wow, John Barnes thinks I should have come on. But I was happy being on, on the bench. And I think there was only three subs because it was the FA Cup. And then the following week, we played away at Derby at the baseball ground and there was five subs and I wasn't on the bench. And that was like a bit of a, oh. And I always remember that game, whatever's happened, my dad didn't get in or the tickets had been robbed or something had happened. And I got called to go outside the ground after the game had just kicked off. And I see my dad and I'm trying to get him in, but I'm in me tracksuit and he's like, what are you? I said, I'm not on the bench. So he was like, what the So that's when the swearing started. So yeah, I was off the bench and I very rarely got back on the bench right throughout the season. I think I only went on the bench a couple of more times. One of them was a European game. Yeah, so that, it was a bit of an, an eye opener of like, you know, there's still a long way to go here, really. You know, I didn't really feature that much. And I think probably a lot of people were saying, you know, where's Jamie Carragher going? What, what's going on? We haven't seen him since. So. It was a long way to play again. Liverpool's season ended with a disappointing fourth place finish in the league and heartbreak losing out to Paris Saint-Germain in the semi-finals of the Cup Winners' Cup. But despite the collective letdown of the campaign, the young tough tackling lad from Bootle kept focus on continuing his personal progression. Sometimes I think back and think, you know, Liverpool was so close to winning the league. It wasn't about, for me, I was just thinking, where can I get in or how can I get involved? And I wouldn't say I felt a massive part of it. I was, I was in the squad most weeks and I'd travel. You know, you go to the away games, you'd be in the hotels with the lads and then you'd be just sat on the bench, you know, with, with your trackie on watching the game. Just great being around it, but I don't think I had that sense of, oh my God, we haven't won the league. You know, you're a young kid and, and as I said, you probably think about yourself more than the team. Probably only years later, you think, Wow, you know, that, that team should have done something. And I always think of, there was the Coventry game, it was a big one. We then went to Sunderland and got a good win, and then we had this double header against Everton and Goodison in a midweek game, and then it was Man United the weekend. And I think if we'd, have, if we'd have got six points from them, two games, we'd have won the league. And I think we ended up with one, really. And that's what let that team down. Whenever it comes to the big moments to deliver, it just couldn't get over the line. And that was the big difference with the teams I played on later on, with, with Gerard Houllier and Rafa. We won big games a lot of the time. Now, we didn't win the league, but we'd win big cup games or we'd win a big game against United or, or Everton, derby games, we did quite well. And that was, the, uh, that was the big difference between that team. That team just didn't have that steel to get across the line and, and probably had better quality than some of the teams I played in, maybe more exciting to watch, but didn't win what it should have won, really. A local legend was born. 
Jamie Carragher would go on to make 737 appearances for the Reds, across midfield, fullback and centre-back. Despite the early promise, his goal-scoring exploits never quite hit the heights, with his debut goal being one of just five senior goals for the club. Next time on my Liverpool debut, the future King of Kirby charts his path to the captain's armband.